In this video, we're going to do an example using the DuPont identity. So we have a company and they have a profit margin of 7%, a total asset turnover of 2 and a return on equity of 21%. And we have to calculate its debt to equity ratio. And the DuPont identity, if you remember, is basically the return on equity split up into three components. So return on equity is equal to the profit margin times the total asset turnover times the equity multiplier. And notice how in the question, we're given the return on equity, we're given the profit margin, and we're given the total asset turnover. However, we're not given the equity multiplier, but we can find that. And it makes sense for us to find the equity multiplier because if you remember, the equity multiplier is basically equal to assets over equity. And since we're finding the debt to equity ratio, perhaps maybe we can do something with the assets to equity ratio to find the debt to equity ratio, but we'll cross that bridge once we get there. So the return on equity is equal to 21%, profit margin is 7%, total asset turnover is two, equity multiplier we're finding, so let's just put a variable x here. So then working with this right side, multiplying everything out, we get 14x, and this is still here 21 and then to isolate for x we just divide both sides by 14 so our x is equal to 1.5 so 1.5 represents our equity multiplier one more thing i want to point out before moving on is how this return on equity of 21 percent and this profit margin of seven percent i kept as percentages here However, I could have switched them both into decimals as well. I could have put 0.21 here and then 0.07 here, and we still would have got the same x value of 1.5. But the point is, is you want to make sure that both of these are congruent. So if this one is in percentages, if the return on equity is in percentages, the profit margin has to be in percentages. If the return on equity is in decimals, then the profit margin has to be in decimals as well. So now since we know that our equity multiplier is 1.5, we know that the assets over equity ratio is also equal to 1.5. So we can write that the assets over the equity is equal to 1.5. Now, whenever they give you a ratio, whether a debt to equity ratio or an assets to equity ratio, and it's in decimals, always take that decimal and put it over one. Sometimes they'll give you fractions, like this 1.5 we could have rewrote as 3 over 2 as well. If it's given as a fraction, then just leave the fraction as is. So we can also write 3 over 2 instead of 1.5 over 1. Both of these are the same fractions. But if they give you a decimal, always put it over 1. And the reason you want to do that is because whenever you're given a ratio, you always want to construct a mini balance sheet to see the proportions of the assets, the debt, and the equity. So then creating this balance sheet here, we got the assets on the left side, the debt and equity on the right side, both the left side and the right side have to equal. And going back to our ratio, well, our assets is represented in the numerator and that's 1.5. So we could put 1.5 here. The equity is in the denominator, that's just one. And since both sides have to balance, we know that the debt plus equity has to equal the assets. So right away, we can tell that our debt has to be point because 0.5 plus 1 is 1.5 and that would equal the left side, the assets. And now from this mini balance sheet that we made, we can figure out what we're asked to find. So we're asked to find the debt to equity ratio. Well, the debt over equity would be 0.5 over 1. And 0.5 over 1 is just 0.5, or if in fractions, it's the same as 1 over 2. So our debt to equity ratio is either 0.5 or 1 over 2. Both of those are equivalent. Now, we could have also got the same answer if we had the 1.5 instead represented as a nice fraction with no decimals. So instead of 1.5, let's say that we wrote 3 over 2, which is the same thing. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. Well, now notice how the assets in the numerator, they are 3. Equity is 2. So that means that our debt has to be 1 because debt plus equity has to equal the assets. And now notice how the debt to equity ratio is just one over two, which is what we got anyway. So either way, whether you are given a fraction or whether you're given a decimal, the only thing you gotta remember is when you're given the decimal, put it over 
one. Now you can also go the other way. You can be given the debt to equity ratio and asked to find the equity multiplier. So I decided to put this little mini example here before finishing the video. Just because students usually have a tough time with this, you have to get comfortable in terms of manipulating given ratios in order to get the ratio that you need. So given a debt to equity ratio of four over five, what is the equity multiplier? We're just pretending that this is a separate company. So debt over equity is equal to four over five. Same thing here, we have to construct a mini balance sheet. So the debt we know is four, the equity we know is five, and that means we know that the assets have to be nine because the right side has to equal the left side. So now that we're given this mini balance sheet, we could find out what the equity multiplier is. The equity multiplier is just equal to assets over equity. So we know that it's equal to nine over five. So assets over equity equals nine over five. And if you wanna put that in decimals, nine divided by five, that would just give you 1.8. So that there, nine over five or 1.8 is your equity multiplier. So overall, not too bad of a question. The trick, the first trick in this question is recognizing that you can use the DuPont identity with the information that you're given. You can use the DuPont identity to find the equity multiplier. And then the second part of it, the probably most important is knowing how to manipulate the equity multiplier put it in a mini balance sheet, and then be able to find your debt to equity ratio, which is what you're asked for from that balance sheet. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.